it is not uncommon to come across decentered intraocular lenses in our practice. This video will discuss four such cases and their management strategies. This 64 year old patient had phaco emulsification with PCIOL and capsule tension ring implantation in the capsular bag. He came to us with blurring of vision. We found the whole capsular bag CTR IOL complex freely moving on the anterior vitreous face. Four iris retractor hooks were used to expand the pupil. Dispersive OVD was injected into the anterior chamber followed by cohesive OVD to maintain the anterior chamber well. We can see that there is no zonular attachment left here. Dispersive viscoat is injected liberally behind the capsular bag to push back the anterior vitreous face and also to provide some support to the capsular bag. Two partial thickness scleral flaps were created 180 degrees opposite to each other. The horizontal axis centered along the visual axis is marked. Now, 1.75 mm behind the anterior limbus, a 26 gauge needle is passed through the ciliary sulcus under the scleral flap. The needle tip is now seen behind the IOL haptic and the capsule tension ring, which are within the capsular bag. The straight needle of the 90 proline suture is passed through a paracentesis from the opposite side. The needle tip pierces the capsular bag in front of the capsule tension ring and the IOL haptic and it is railroaded out with the 26 gauge needle. Adjacent to the proline suture which has come out under the scleral flap, the 26 gauge needle is again passed through the ciliary sulcus. This time, the tip of the needle is brought above the capsular bag. The second needle of the same proline suture is again railroaded out. Now we have the proline suture loop around the haptic and the capsule tension ring. On pulling the two ends of the suture, the capsular bag complex can be moved now. This maneuver is performed on the other side also. By applying equal and adequate traction, the suture ends are knotted on both sides to center the capsular bag, capsule tension ring, IOL complex. The scleral flaps and the conjunctiva are sutured, the hooks are removed and the OBD washed out of the anterior chamber. We can see here the Purkinje images overlapping, making sure that the IOL is centered in the visual axis. This is the three month postoperative picture showing a well centered IOL. Here is another capsular bag IOL CTR subluxation. Let's see how we can manage it differently. As in the previous case, dispersive and cohesive OVD is injected above and below the capsular bag. Using a micro forceps and a Sinsky hook, this bag IOL CTR complex is brought into the anterior chamber. Using a micro scissors, the capsular bag equator is snipped between the open ends of the capsular tension ring. One eyelet of the CTR is grasped with the micro forceps and it is pulled out of the capsular bag through the paracentesis. Using two Sinsky hooks, the capsular excess edge is retracted and one haptic is maneuvered out of the bag. The other haptic and the optic is also similarly brought out of the capsular bag. Now the capsular bag is removed out through the paracentesis. The plan now is to fixate this IOL to the iris. Intracameral preservative free pilocarpin is injected to constrict the pupil. While the pupil gets constricted, one haptic of the IOL is tucked under the iris. Taking care to retain the optic over the iris, the other haptic is also tucked under the iris by sweeping the pupillary margin over the haptic with a spatula. Now the optic is captured over the iris. The two straight needles of the 90 proline sutures are bent. One needle is passed through the clear cornea, piercing the iris and includes the haptic under the iris and is brought back out piercing the iris and the clear cornea. Similarly, the proline suture is passed under the other haptic. The two loops of suture between the iris and cornea within the anterior chamber on either side of the haptic are pulled more into the anterior chamber. One end of the suture is snipped with the micro scissors. Now using two micro forceps, the suture is knotted to secure the haptic to the iris. Multiple knots are similarly applied to reinforce the fixation of the haptic to the iris. 
liberal use of cohesive ovd in the anterior chamber is mandatory to have adequate space for the two micro forceps to apply the knots for the other haptic fixation let us see another technique the two loops of proline suture between the iris and cornea within the anterior chamber is brought out through the paracentesis which is adjacent to the haptic the ends are cut short and knotted the knots are slipped inside to secure the haptic to the iris the ends of the knots are trimmed within the anterior chamber with the micro scissors the optic is now slipped under the iris very gently and assisted by retracting the pupillary margin the advantage here is that the whole procedure is done through just two paracentesis openings a superior peripheral iridectomy is also performed with the vitrectomy cutter this is the 4 months post operative picture showing that the pupil dilates very well and the iole is well centered this is a grossly subluxated traumatic cataract in a 43 year old patient iris hooks supported the capsulorexis margin to complete the phaco aspiration of the soft lens a capsule tension ring was implanted for better centration but after the hooks were removed and the iol implanted into the capsular bag the iol was not getting adequately centered so a partial thickness scleral flap was created superiorly corresponding to the area of maximum subluxation this is an ahmed capsular tension segment which is around 1/3 the size of a complete capsular tension ring and has a raised segment with an eyelet at the tip the 90 proline suture is passed through the eyelet of the raised segment then it is introduced into the anterior chamber and using two sinski hooks it is positioned into the capsular bag with the raised segment coming over the capsular excess margin adjacent to the scleral flap superiorly the two needles of the 90 proline suture now lie outside the main incision temporarily these needles are brought out through the ciliary sulcus under the scleral flap by railroading them with a 26 gauge needle the suture ends are cut short and knotted with adequate traction to achieve good centration for the iol capsule tension ring capsular bag complex the knot is covered by the scleral flap which is sutured and the conjunctiva is also closed in the next case the pc iol was seen suspended into the vitreous with one haptic hooked to the peripheral iridectomy a three port pass plana vitrectomy was performed to clear all the vitreous around the iol two partial thickness scleral flaps were created at 3 and 9 o'clock a micro forceps was introduced through the paracentesis to grasp the iol optic and the haptic was released from the peripheral iridectomy 1.75 mm from the anterior limbus a 20 gauge opening is created with a needle under both scleral flaps an iol grasping forceps is introduced through one of these openings and the tip of the haptic is grasped and exteriorized while holding steadily this haptic the forceps is introduced through the other 20 gauge opening to hold the second haptic it is very important to hold at the tip of the haptic for easy exteriorization the infusion is maintained at all times it is possible to use an ac maintainer also in cases where pass plana vitrectomy is not required after noticing the natural location of the exteriorized haptics a scleral pocket is constructed to tuck this haptics intrasclerally this is done with a 26 gauge needle the pocket can follow the contour of the haptic so that it can be tucked in smoothly here is another case with a multi piece iol to show more clearly the haptic tucking the intrascleral pocket should be long enough to get adequate haptic length to be tucked in when both haptics are tucked in adequately the iol gets well centered now the infusion is removed pass plana sclerotomy is sutured and an air bubble is injected into the anterior chamber this is to get the scleral bed dry for the application of the fibrin glue the two components thrombin and fibrinogen of the fibrin glue is applied under the flap and the flap is fixed back the same glue is applied to seal the conjunctiva also so in this series of four cases of decentered iols four different techniques were adopted to get a satisfactory stabilization of the iol for the long term the choice of the most suited technique for the particular case at hand will provide excellent outcomes in such difficult situations thank you